Hey there, Aiden here from Core Electronics and today we're going to take a look at our printing poster which was a infographic style cheat sheet style poster that we put together for FDM 3D printing. So what we're going to do is just go through and look at all the different elements that are on the poster and give you a bit of a backstory as to why they're there. So we'll start off with our useful links section. So up the top here I've put down all my favourite links. Um, granted two of them are from myself that I've put together but if I was getting into 3D printing I think these are the these are the core things that I really want to know about at the start, on the, on the outset. So we've got the remote printer control setup, which is using OctoPrint and how you can set up a Raspberry Pi to control your printer over a network. And if you type in this tiny URL here to a uh, internet browser's URL bar, it'll just take you straight to that tutorial with a video alongside it just explaining the whole process start to finish. So that's a great one to use. We've also got the 3D printing Reddit community. Now, if you're just getting into 3D printing, these guys are gonna be great, a great help. There's a whole subsection of Reddit, subreddits to do with 3D printing as well that you can find on the sidebar on the 3D printing Reddit community. And I really recommend that you at least take a look around those ones at least once. Um, the next one is a guide to perfect prints, which was put up by a guy on the Wellsbot forums. And it was his process of starting with his printer, getting the perfect settings, all that stuff, start to finish. Again, a really good read. If not, follow along what he says to do and you'll learn a lot about printing in that process. Uh, next, we've got the Lulzbot Assembly Guides, which is their open hardware assembly instructions. So anything that you need to repair or modify on your 3D printer, there will be instructions right there on how to do it step by step with pictures. Uh, things like changing out tool heads, even changing your PEI sheets, things like that. Lulzbot have got you covered there. So the next one on the list would be our online printing workshop, which was something I put together, and that goes through step-by-step step how to get started with 3D printing from a beginner's point of view. So that's something that you should definitely check out if you're just getting started. Another thing would be the pictorial troubleshooting guide from the guys at All3DP. They put together a really good thing that goes through, they've got pictures of what the problem is, and then they give you steps on how to get around that problem, which is a really good tool that I still use pretty often myself. Next up, which is worth a mention I think all the time, is the 3D Benchy, which is just a little boat that you can print that tests a whole different, a whole different selection of settings on your printer. And it's a really cool little print to do just to see what, what the finished product looks like. So you can test different filaments, test your printer, take a picture and share it, see what it all looks like. And finally, we've got the replacement parts and designs as Lulzbot printers are made with open source hardware in mind. You can actually download any of the parts that are on these printers and print them yourself or create them yourself in any way. It's the same sort of thing. So that's that bottom one there. Moving on, we've got a side view of a 3D print and I've just labeled all the important things that I think might pop up in maybe a slicer that you're not really sure how they relate to your model. And I thought it would be a good way to just do that. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the, this element here, which is the side view of a 3D print. So essentially I've just made a really basic, basic model of nothing in particular, and I'm just gonna point out all the different slicer settings in relation to what it actually means on a 3D print. So we'll start off with the layer height, because that's the one that you know, or most people would know, starting off with FDM 3D printing, and that's just one single layer on this uh, image. Now, if you look at the bottom and top thickness, you can actually see that they branch out and, and include a selection of layers. Now, the bottom and top thickness is usually set as a joint setting in your slicer software, and it refers to the number of solid layers at the bottom and top of your print, and it's usually a multiple of your layer height. It doesn't have to be, but it usually is. Um, finally, you've got overhangs, which are usually the parts that you would print supports on. So this is an overhang here, and remember that overhangs are usually measured in a degree, so you'll say, oh, it's, it's a 45 degree overhang or it's a 60 degree overhang. And we're always talking about from Z being zero degrees out to that point. So 45 degrees would obviously be about here and anything past that, we'd look at 55, 60 degrees, depending. And I'd say for this overhang, you definitely want to print supports. Um, so yeah, that's the side view taken care of. Next up, we've got the G code section down the bottom here. So this is the G code view of a 3D print. And this is a pretty slicer specific thing, but if you're using Cura, Lulzbot Edition especially, this is what you'll see if you were to look at the bottom layer of a cube print, for example. So like I said before, the bottom and top thicknesses are usually solid. So this would be the bottom layer because the inside of it is actually solid. If you were looking at the middle layer of a cube with a certain infill percentage, you'd actually see a cool yellow crosshatch pattern here because it would be giving you those crosshatch infills 
with a bit of air in there as well. But we'll go through each different part. So this is the light blue sections on any of your slicer G-code views refer to the tool head movements where it's printing removable parts. So if you're printing skirts, brims, rafts, supports, anything that you will remove at the end of the print, it will actually appear as a light blue color in the, um, the G-code view. Next up, you've got the infill material, which we just went over, which is the yellow stuff in the center. And like I said, this is representing a solid print. On the outside of the print, you've got a green and a red. Now this is the inner and the outer shell. So the inner shell is obviously the green one and the outer shell is the red one. It's interesting to know too that the inner shell is usually joined to your infill. So there's always a, um, a setting somewhere where you can say, I want it to be joined by 10% or 15% and it will actually press the infill into that inner, inner shell by a small amount, which helps it all fuse together really nicely. Another interesting thing is the, the perimeter, any of the perimeters you do, will usually be a multiple of your nozzle width. So the nozzle width being 0.5, um, you would usually see, well, for this one in particular, it's 2.5 two side by side, so it would be a one mil perimeter or shell thickness. So the shell thickness refers to both the inner and the outer shell put together. And finally, we've got some dark blue lines just across the print here, and they actually refer to travel movement. So that's when your printer's tool head isn't actually printing anything. It's just moving from one part on, a, on the same layer to another part to print again. So usually with travel moves, if they're over a certain amount, you'll need to retract your filament and go again. So that's what that's all talking about. So now you might be able to look at a G-code view of a model and, and know what you're looking at a bit better. Down the bottom, I've got a little table, like a little quick access table of the eight most popular filament types I've seen used. And on that table, I've included the quick name, the, the name that you'll see people refer to it as. So for polylactic acid, they're gonna say PLA. You've also got the full name, which is polylactic acid. And then you've got the nozzle, temperature for that filament. That's a rough estimate. Usually you can go plus or minus five degrees of these values and get a, a, a similar print. And the, the bed temperature, which is if you've got a heated bed on your printer, which all the Lulzwatt printers have, you'll be able to just use that value there and it will cover you quite well for most of these prints. Now that's not super important when you're using quick print profiles, but if you were swapping between filaments, that's gonna be awesome to have. Next up is the E-steps table, which is this part here. Now, when you have a Wellsbot 3D printer, you have the modular tool head design, which is a great aspect of the printer itself. But one thing I've noticed when I've changed them out, and if I'm not using the same version of Cura over and over again, like the same PC with Cura installed, I might be using a laptop here and a desktop there, um, you'll notice that you have to remember the E-steps value written on the rear side of the tool head before you install it. So you'll have to note that down. You'll install the tool head, attach all the wiring, and then when you're installing it to your slicer settings, you will have to uh, place that ESEPS value down. And if you've forgotten it, you have to then go and remove that bolt and check it again, which I've had to do once or twice. So I thought it would be handy to just have a little table written on my poster. If this thing's gonna be hanging up behind my printer, I'll be able to just write it down in there and I'll always know that my, you know, my dual tool head has these two values for its ESEPS which is handy to have. And finally, I've put, in, I've put some useful print tests down the right-hand side of the page. Essentially, if you're going to test out your printer, you're gonna do one of these things. Maybe there's some other ones out there. If you go on Thingiverse and type in 3D printing tests, you'll see all sorts of crazy ones, but these are pretty basic ones that sort of test one thing at a time. And I'm just gonna go through the basics of what they are. So essentially a cow cube, you're just gonna be testing the dimensions of your printer. So this cow cube in particular has an X and a Y and a Z on the three different faces. You'd orient it on the print bed in your slicer settings so they correlate to the right ones. And then you'd print it, you'd grab out some calipers and you'd measure the actual dimensions of the cube because it's a 20 by 20 by 20 cube in the software. You wanna see what it actually prints as. So that's one. The next one would be a negative space test. This is a pretty cool one. So essentially, <coughs> negative spaces are reliant on the tolerances of your printer and your filament. Different filaments behave in different ways. So you can print one of these, which is about three or four grams of filament. It's gonna print essentially like this on the bed. And on the front of your model, you've got some measurements. So 0.2 millimeter gap, all the way up to a 0.6 millimeter gap. And that's between this part, this little cylindrical part and the cylindrical hole. So it's just talking about the gap in between the two, how it was designed. And you can see that this print, which was printed on the Lulzbot Mini, 
is okay until 0.4, and then once it hits a 0.4 mil gap, the plastic starts to fuse. I can just press that one out, so it's almost the perfect fit. If I go any further, I can't remove that one from the print. So that's a cool one to do, just to know how you can design your parts to be pretty flush when, when they're printing. The next one up would be an overhang test. Now this one's gonna be printed with this flat square part on the bed, like this, and you'll be measuring how the printer prints its overhangs, which are these parts here. So we'll take a closer look at that. It's got them written on the front there, and on the side view, you can see that it slowly increases. So it goes from 30 degrees here, all the way up to 70 degrees there. And looking at the results, the printer printed 30 and 45 really well. It didn't have any issues. And then you start seeing some weird behavior happening, especially up around the 70 degree mark. So that's a quick way to test what overhangs are possible with that filament. And these are unsupported overhangs too. So they're not supported by anything. Sometimes you'll have a part of the model that comes out that can actually hold your overhang steady, which is a different test altogether. This is an unsupported overhang test. Next up would be the stringing test. So we've talked about retraction, we've talked about stringing before. Essentially, when your printer is printing multiple parts on the same layer and they're not joined together, it's gonna to have to retract filament from the tool head, move and then print again. So this is a really quick little model that you can print and it will show you how your retraction settings are holding up for the filament that you're using. And what you don't wanna see is all those little cobwebby looking strands of filament between all those pylons. Now you can remove them, you can just pull them away, but you can also go into your slicer settings, go into your advanced options, and you can change the different amounts of retraction and the speed of retraction, which, is my, which might be something that's really worth doing, especially if you've got a lot of retractions in a model. So that's a quick and easy way to test whatever settings you have. Once you've dialed them in, record them for that filament and use them every time. And finally, we'll take a look at a temp tower. So essentially, this temp tower is separated into blocks of 10 mil, which are all numbered. You can then go ahead and using a plugin within your slicing software to change the temperature at different heights of your print. So it'll be printed like this, and you're just gonna be changing, say like a five degree change every 10, 20 mils. And then you can take a look at the difference in print quality at the end of the print. And then you can pick the one that looks the best essentially. So that's pretty much the basis of our practical printing poster. I should mention that all those STL models that I've just showed you, all the STLs for those are available at this tiny URL. So it's corelec.io slash 30. If you go ahead and type that into your URL bar, you'll be able to download that zip file and try all of those prints yourself. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy your practical printing poster. There's a PDF available in the download links below. If you wanted to grab it, go down to Officeworks or something and print out your own copy to print up in your to hang up in your workshop. Have a great day guys.